Good. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome, guys. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Rebecca, for this uh, opportunity. It's good to be here back in Melbourne. Uh, but our hearts and spirit are still in Kenya and Uganda. Yeah, we just. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> You know, our physical body is here, but the spirit is still there. It's not, we got to pull it back here again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so this is a, a quick update about uh, our trip. And uh, again, as I said, please, uh, Ruben and uh, uh, Papa Luke, you know, or Jerry, Jerry is there as well. If you want to jump in, please come in uh, uh, to join this uh, message. Okay. The key messages that they were delivered were this basically. Uh, that Jesus brought the gospel of the kingdom and not religion. I think that was uh, one of the powerful messages that was well received. Uh, then the second one we talked about is, you know, that how we've been restored back to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, these are all uh, surprisingly new to even the pastors who were there in those conferences, which is sort of a, took us by surprise uh, because they didn't even know that scriptures existed. You know, they, we talked about our identity as sonship. Uh, and then we talked about our authority and mandate that Jesus has brought for us. And so these are some of the things that we covered. And finally, our role as ambassadors uh, based on Corinthians 2, 520. So this is what we actually uh, shared between the three of us whenever we, wherever we're traveling, whatever conference we had, and uh, even to the schools and, and so on. So basically... Uh, this was the information that we took and, uh, you know, we were able to, Ruben, Papa Luke, myself, we were able to interchange uh, these messages, you know, that's a good thing about us as implementers, we can just, uh, even if we are not like when one of the conferences, uh, each of those conferences were two days, uh, one conference, I was not able to go on the second day because I had a stomach uh, upset, uh, but, you know, we just, you know, and, and one, on one of the conferences, uh, Ruben was not there as well for the first day because he could have gone pick Sarah and, uh, so, you know, we, there was so much of uh, flexibility and, you know, we we're very, very versatile that we can just jump into each other's shoes and share the, the message uh, because everything that we shared was truly, uh, you know, from the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's how we really, uh, I tell you, it was fun. It was exciting. Uh, it, you know, I, I enjoyed myself seven weeks. It was, you know, the conferences were, especially when there were questions were asked, and we were able to sort of talk to them. Even the first day in Nairobi, the question and answer session that really broke open some taboos there, you know, talking. <laughs> some, you know, but talking about wine, is it okay to drink wine for communion? <laughs> and that led to something else that really, you know, hell broke loose there. Even they said, is it okay, you know, is it okay to, you know, why should we refrain from having intimacy with our partner before, these before the message or before coming for the you know, worship. Oh my goodness, what a <laughs> legalism, yeah. So it was amazing, but it was, but it's, again, it just, it broke the, you know, the bondage over them and released them into freedom. So that was in, exceptional. You know, that was a, what a way to start the conference, yeah. And basically for me specifically, uh, I think what was the most significant message that we got across, especially in Africa, every other pastor is an apostle. Yeah, they carry the title as an apostle. And so we had to break that myth that, you know, that apostle is not a title, it's a, it's a, it's a function. Yeah, so we were surprised that even some of those pastors decided not to use the name Papa apostles anymore. Uh, and one of them was a queen who renamed herself as queen. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it was exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, so this, to me, this was uh, one of the most important for us personally and for me as well. He said, you know, in Luke 9, 1, 2, it says, one day Jesus called together the 12 disciples. I've highlighted that and gave them power and authority and to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the help, you know, the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Uh, and so basically, and then they came back, it was 10 says, when the disciples came back as apostles, returned, they told Jesus everything they've done. And then he slipped away quietly with them towards the town of Bethany. Uh, so to me, that, that was uh, really something that broke uh, people's mindset, you know, in, 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 in the places where we went to. And the other one, we talked about the kingdom message where he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom to other towns too. So we were actually, I highlighted other towns 
And that's what we have been doing. We actually took the kingdom of uh, the good news of the kingdom to those places where wherever we had conferences. And, uh, you know, that's why we are called. You see, that's why he said, I was sent. And for us, that's why we are, we are being sent. And uh, so again, so this was to me very, very significant uh, scriptures that really uh, broke the, what I would say, the bondage, the, you know, the darkness over people's, you know, and religion, broke religion in those places. And people understood that Jesus did not bring religion, he brought the kingdom and to restore us back into to the, with the Father. So that was an incredible experience for us. And the other one, I think where we also use the scripture was quite a lot. Uh, for Luke 4, 18, where Jesus, after he's been gone through 40 days of fast uh, in, in the wilderness, and he was tested by the, end, the devil for three times. And then he came, he says, he came back in power. He came back in power and he was preaching, you know, everybody was uh, excited about his, what he was doing. And then he came to his hometown of Nazareth and he came to the temple and they gave him the scripture, on my, my Isaac, uh, book on Isaiah. And he read from 61, he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. And he set me free to send me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So to me, what I really you know, found uh, experience was that who were the oppressed? Right. The question to me was who are it is actually those who are in religion. You know, believers, Christians who are actually in religion. So this is where, just like in the book of Acts, when the disciples, when Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came upon them, they went out to preach the gospel and they were preaching to the Jews predominantly, who were having a religious mindset. Right. So only later on, Paul uh, went out into the Gentiles. So to me, that was exactly what we were doing. We were doing exactly what the disciples are doing. We were actually breaking down the religious mindset and breaking them free from bondages, from whatever thoughts they have and struggles they were having and giving them the good news in a new way, exactly what Jesus wanted us to do. And we saw the transformation. We saw the breakthroughs there. All right. So these are some, some of the experiences that, that we came across and for me, it, what came out of this for this meeting is that it's the same. What we saw in Africa is actually happening in everywhere in the world. Religion is still dominating the church, right? The church is us. So we are actually been kept like a, in, a, in a zoo, caged in a zoo, and just being taught religion, 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 and nothing else, right? And program after program. So this is where we have now a mandate. We have to change that mindset. We have to change the way the built, you know, congregations get together in, in buildings. I don't want to call those buildings churches because we are the church. Yeah. So they are basically what I'll be like. We have called it an administrative center. Uh, we need to go, you know, go to these places and we need to change their mindset. You know, and back, it's back again to having these smaller churches, home churches, home meetings, where this is where we will see the power and breakthroughs. And for me personally, one of the experiences I had, because on that particular day when I had a stomach problem and I was resting at home in, uh, in a Matunda way with uh, Goethe's uh, home, uh, family home. And uh, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, this is what I'm observing. Uh, what do we need to do here? How do we uh, can change this uh, religion, break down this religion and bring a uh, relationship and the kingdom into, into those church buildings? into those people who are actually under the bondage of uh, so-called Christianity, right? And uh, so that's when uh, two days before that, Ruben and I were talking about, you know, it's in my heart to rebrand re my Kingdom Business Network because, uh, because Kingdom Business Network, I've been running it for about six, seven years now, is predominantly addressing the Christian entrepreneurs. But now the Lord has put in my heart to change. He said, no longer call it Kingdom Entrepreneurs, but he said, I want you to, change everybody in the marketplace, including employees. It's a bigger mandate. So we were, Ruben and I were messing, talking about what name shall we give? What name shall we call it? And then, you know, we came with this idea of man, M-A-N, right? Marketplace Ambassadors Network. So that's the name that we decided. And, uh, and, and Ruben called it Matthew Avedias Network. So I don't know what that is. <laughs> right? 
So it's still sent for MAN. So I'm happy to I take it both ways. <laughs> right. And uh, but the key thing is then suddenly God gave me some scripture verses. Uh, what are the foundational scriptures and all these and how are we going to link up this with the website that uh, we are setting up in God, you know, uh, Christformedinners.org, where all the discipleship resources are already there. So we're going to link up man, marketplace ambassadors network, bring and promote that worldwide, and then tie that for them to come into discipleship training into the Christformedinners.org. Uh, and that's that's what we see as a as the as the mandate going forth. And that's the only way we're going to fast track this whole thing. Uh, because otherwise going nation by nation is going to be too long a time. So, but when we go online with this message, I think we've been very successful with the online messages over COVID and we've seen the fruits of it. We've grown the church four times. So if we go with this with a, you know, more aggressively with a greater purpose, I think we will be able to reach out in, across all nations. And I think the key place we need to be, break into the United States. And I believe the market is ready to receive now. Amen. Yeah. So this is where I'm coming from personally. And uh, I'm excited. And of course, all the implementers, I'm already giving them some assignments. I'm already planning some work for them to put together a manual for MAN, right? So a manual when everybody, anybody becomes a member of MAN, there's going to be a manual which talks to them about the various things we talked about, identity, kingdom, uh, how, you know, what's your power and authority that you have. And then, uh, you know, how to do you do declaration prayers, all these sort of things. So that that would be a good manual that is available to each member uh, as a starting point. And then from there, we link up to the discipleship program. So so that's what my my purpose is. That's my I'm excited about it. Uh, and uh, we talked about it at our implementers meeting uh, last uh, on Friday, I think it was. And uh, we, we all are all ex uh, ready to go. And I want to get this launched maybe within the next three months. So this is my plan. Okay. I've already registered the website, the domain, wow. MAN, Marketplace Ambassador Network. You know, it was the cheapest price available. Would you believe? It was $9 per year for domain. <laughs> wow. So not, not that price is an issue for you, but uh, yes. It's not, Praise but it's God. God's favor, right? And, and I registered too. I said, ma'am. Ma um, Marketplace Ambassadors Network dot network, Marketplace Ambassadors dot com. I signed up. I took both. They both nine dollars each. I say okay, and I took it for two years. Forgotten to explain. You forgot to explain about the garden and the creation of man and why it's connected to a man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's Genesis. Yeah, that's coming. I, that's part of the scriptures that we're going to talk about. Yeah. So you know, so there is, there is a reason why we're calling it man as well. We'll that's for another day. Uh, that's that's a mystery <laughs> amen so you know be ex expected you know that's what i would say so yeah so this is what we did so in summary over the seven weeks we conducted five leadership excellence conference uh it was first started in nairobi then we went to kampala into jinja this is in uganda then we came back to kenya we did it in kimilili which is uh close to Kampala border and then to Kitale, which is close to where uh, uh, Gertrude's parents are living. And uh, so that's uh, each conference was two days. And uh, it was, we had some incredible experiences in each one of those great uh, meetings, especially the last one uh, in Kimil in Kitale, where that was had the, that's the conference that most pastors as well uh, who attended. And uh, it was amazing, the Q&A sessions and, and what happened in the spiritual realm as well. It was, uh, maybe I can ask Ruben to share that later. Okay. And then we did three prison visits. Uh, one was a ladies prayer, women's prison. There's the first one. is probably the biggest uh, women's prison in, uh, in Kenya, which has 600 uh, over prisoners. And uh, they were, you know, with some children as well. And then to what, the men's prison and followed by a juvenile prison. And each one of them, we actually gave a lot of, uh, we bought a lot of stuff materials for them. Because the prison in Kenya, they only give the main inmates uh, the uniform and food, two meals a day, nothing else, right? So if they need to buy soap, uh, anything else they need, they have to buy it. So we were able to go out there, distribute soaps uh, and for the juvenile courts, uh, children, uh, slippers and, and sanitary pads for the ladies and, and, and children, some for the children as well. So they were very, very grateful for us, to us. 
and they, uh, they said, you know, very, very rarely people visit them. But one unique thing that we found in the prison system in, in Kenya, the prison officers, they're predominantly Christians, believers, and there's such compassion for these prisoners. It's amazing the relationship between the prisoner and the prison officers. You know, we asked them, they said, hey, look, they've already been condemned. They've already been, you know, condemned. So why do we need to put any more condemnation on them? That was an amazing breakthrough that I found was amazing. And, and the prisoners themselves acknowledge that they have such a beautiful relationship with the prison officers. They've been kind to them, uh, encouraging them. And uh, so all the time, that's a kind of a relationship that we saw. And that was incredible, exceptional. And, uh, you know, there are some people there, uh, of course, uh, serving long-term sentences. Uh, but each one of them, we were able to give them a word of encouragement. Uh, that's, that's, you know, for the prison officers, the warden allowed us to share uh, some for more, at least an hour. Uh, so we were able to share and give some word of encouragement as well. That was beautiful. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, we sponsored the rugby event. Wow, that was amazing yeah it was amazing it was a one full day event that was uh, evangelism on the field yes. we had over yes. about 300 participants spectators came right and there were nine teams playing and uh, and man this was beautiful you know and they this is the first time they've ever had a, such a, a one day rugby seven event and after that, they were asking for more. They said, we want more of this, right? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was obviously, uh, we must give credit to Churchill, who is uh, Bruben's uh, brother-in-law, because he's a coach to the local team. So he was the one who took the initiative through, and he organized the, the, the event. And the people came from all over Nairobi and all these sort of places. It was just incredible. And wow, you know, all these things, there are some gems I'm, hide, I'm holding for later. Some of the miracles we saw, the wonders that happened in those places. Uh, so it was amazing. So we have agreed that we will now look at this as an annual event, yes. uh, starting with uh, where it started and to make it go nationwide. Uh, and, uh, and so one day, even the national TVs will cover these events. Uh, it was just incredible. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Really appreciated that. Yeah. And then we visited two schools. Uh, this was in Uganda, in Jinja, I think. Papa, look, Jinja, all right? Yes. Yeah, we went to two primary schools. Uh, and again, it was, you know, it's, it's such, you know, those schools were so backward. You know, we just walked there. I think there's about 50, 60 children per school, per classroom, per right? Classroom, yeah. yeah. 60, One teacher. And they were all cramped in a little room like this, you know? And it was, uh, so, but they, had most, they, had, they were so joyful. And pretty much everybody were believers in Christ. And they were able to, you know, they, with the way they, you know, were so polite to us, so respectful. And, uh, you know, poor Papa Luke and myself, we were able to share some encouragement, word of encouragement for them. And then we saw one of the boy sitting in the front had a, a, like a handkerchief or a bandage around his left hand near the wrist. So we asked the teacher, what's wrong with him? He said, oh, he's uh, having drips because of malaria. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, let's pray for him. Mm -hmm. So we called him up. His name was James, I think. Yes. James, yeah. And uh, so we said, no, we're going we're gonna to ask all your children to pray for him. Mm -hmm. So we taught them how to pray. Mm -hmm. And everybody prayed for him. Uh, and it was just incredible experience as well. Yeah. And even the teachers were surprised uh, how easy it was to pray. Uh, you know, not going through fasting or, you know, uh, things of that nature. So, again, this was good. So, one school was a primary school. The other one was a secondary school we went to. Uh, that was about, uh, the primary school was a private school. It's a small private school. The secondary school was a government school. I think there were about six, seven hundred, a thousand children. About a thousand children. And the headmistress was, charged, you know, gave, spent some time with us. You know, the teachers, they are struck. They work long hours. 12 hours a day. So they start at 6 in the morning and they finish at 6. And they, they're getting a salary, they're getting is miserable. You know? But the, but the passion they have was just, you know, was just beautiful, really. And, uh, yep, so this was a, another exciting activity that we came across. And, and then we ministered to one high school children's conference. 
this was a five day conference they had all there about 500 uh, high school children i think ranging from about 14 to 17 years old and uh, papa luke myself and J jiggy james were there and uh, on the last day on friday and uh, we so we were again able to give a word of encouragement to the students uh, jiggy james taught them how to dance that was a big hit that was a big hit right oh i think the children really got excited by that you know and uh, that was awesome and uh, papa luke also shared something and i shared about passion follow your passions and then the good thing is then the teachers uh, you know the, they said teachers we want to have a separate session with you guys so when we finished with the children i was i papa luke and i finished so jiggy james went on with uh, having a share with them and then we they wanted to talk about finance so we sat under a nice tree with shade. Uh, I think almost two hours plus, I think we were there, Papa yeah. Luke, yeah? Yeah. yeah? And they were so hungry for understanding <laughs> finance. So we taught them about finance, how to manage the budgets, how to be put away, you know, uh, uh, emergency funds and all the, it was an eye opener for everybody. They never said, they thought we never realized this is how we need to manage our finances. And there were some who were really in desperate situations. There was one teacher where uh, he had start, started a part-time business. He bought a truck and the truck, uh, within six months, the truck got cr crashed and it was complete write-off. And they were in severe debt, all, both his wife and his salary. Every cent is being taken by the, guy, by the bank. And the money comes back the, to go, the salary goes straight to the bank. Nothing and he about. says, from what he told me, when I calculated, it'll take him another 30 years to settle. Yeah. You know? So I, I again asked him a very simple question. Why didn't you take insurance? You know, if you have taken an insurance, the, pro, if in the truck would have been protected, you know, damaged, you would have got the money back. <clears throat> he said, we only did a third party insurance. We didn't think about full insurance. You know? So again, it's, it's not applying wisdom. Uh, so we just prayed for them and uh, we, you know, we just planted a small seed in that in the particular teachers and uh, we just prayed hopefully miraculously God will cancel all the debts for them. And, but he still keeps in touch with me and I keep on encouraging him, I'm teaching him how to start a business with no capital, for example, like tuition. If he can do some tuition, that will help him uh, to be able to get some income to supplement whatever you know, they, they're getting right now. So again, so this is, you know, it's sometimes it's heart-wrenching to see all these things, but there's a lot of con men in, around there as well, right? Especially in Jinja and Kampala, even the part of people who after a conference, they came, oh, I'm running this orphanage, I'm running this orphanage, we need support, we need support. I say, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They, I, I challenge them and I ask, you know, how come orph orphanage is industry? He said industry there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we said, no, we build people. We don't build uh, orphanages or buildings. So that's, we really, we were quite uh, blunt with them because, uh, you know, we knew beforehand that these are peace camps that is operating. And so we were quite careful with that as well. Okay. And then finally, we talked about, you uh, know, every conference we shared, apart from the high school, I've already covered that. I also, uh, we talked in every conference, we did spend time on talking about finance because they were all, excited from our testimonies that we're traveling uh, without time free, uh, financially independent. We don't have to worry about cap invest money, money for us when, you know, we can spend as much time as we want uh, where God wants us to because we are financially independent. And that sort of a, drew a lot of excitement and they wanted to know how we do that. And so we were able to share some time with them, teaching them on the basic uh, financial uh, health, health, uh, but wellness. And again, we told them, if you want more information, join us on our, on our discipleship training. We got all the resources available on the website so they can actually look at it and, and learn from that as well. And of course, other than that, you know, every Sunday, we pretty much all Sundays, we were occupied with preaching engagements in many, many churches as well. Right. That was again, you know, some of the churches were big, uh, reasonable size, big, I would say it's probably about 70, 70 people was considered a medium sized church. But it is sad because some of these churches are all incomplete. Pretty much most of the buildings are incomplete. Uh, they have walls and roof, but nothing else. No windows, no doors. All right. And, they are, and one of the churches that really broke my heart was in Jinja, where the pastor spent 20 minutes enforcing, literally forcing the congregation to sign up 
pledge forms, pledge to, for, the, for the building fund. 20 minutes he was spending, right? And I told the assistant pastor after that, I said, you're wasting your time. This building is never going to be complete because these people are going to run away from this church because they can't afford the money. Because cost of living is going up tremendously. Salaries are not going up and you're just milking them from what they have. The churches, will, the congregation will disappear. And even if whatever money you collect is not going to be enough because the cost of products is rising so fast, whatever you collect will never be enough to complete the building. Right? So that was like eye-openers for them as well. And I think a lot of, uh, most of the, some of the pastors' meetings we had, we even covered uh, why tithing is not the way to go. Especially the first uh, day, I think first or second day in Nairobi, Kapalu, yep. we had about 25 pastors in a meeting. And then we talked about it. And then uh, after the con discussion about why tithing is not what is, is right, uh, the pastor, the, the elder, the chairman elder and the deputy elder came to us privately and say, you know, how, what do we do? What do we do now? What do we do now? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's a good question to ask, you know, so, so there was a lot of, even in everywhere we had a conference that the pastors were really uh, in a, a bit of a, you know, in a dilemma, what do we do now? Okay. And one of the blunt questions we asked them in the, you know, like in one of the pastors' home, we were having lunch. There were about six or seven pastors and his five and their wives. So we asked, are you guys really enjoying what you're doing? You know, they said, no, we are struggling. Especially the wives, they said, no, we are not at all. You know, we are really struggling uh, because they don't have the finances, right? They think that's the calling, but I tell, we tell them, if it's a calling, God will provide. Right, but if you're not getting the provision, then that is obviously in the wrong place, right? And especially the wives or the pastors, they came forward very, very blunt. They said, "Yes, you're right. You know, we are not enjoying our lives. You know, we got children. We don't know how to take care of them. We can't provide for them. So these are the some of the situation. Again, we pointed them, come join us, join our discipleship, learn how to you know understand the, what how kingdom operates." And then from there, you can look at start, starting a business with capital or no little capital or no capital. And that way you can start lear learning to support yourself and your family without having to depend on tithes. You know? And what, one particular church, when I went to share, uh, it was a three-month-old church. It's, all, it's literally a zinc on top uh, attached to a wall, a wall of a house. I think probably about 20 zincs. And then the side, there's half of it because zinc, the other half is exposed, right? And it's no cement on the floor. If it rains, it just gets muddy. And, uh, you know, literally there were about 12 people there. So how can that pastor survive, right? And he understood the message. He said, Matthew, you're absolutely right. I need to look for alternative source of income. Uh, because at the moment, he's typically living on the income of his wife, who is a teacher, right? So it's so sad when we see all these situations. Uh, we just hope that everywhere we have sown this knowledge and, you know, uh, transformation, that they will pick it up and run with it. Uh, and we opened the, left the door open for them, come back to us for, you know, join our discipleship training once a week on a 12-month program, and you will see a big different change in your life and your family. So these are some of the things that really took place as well. <coughs> and of course, in every of this area, we had some, you know, the healings that took place was just amazing. All right. It was just amazing. I've got some, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. So some pictures now to enjoy. This is uh, in Nairobi, the first day and second day. We had a family ministry, ministry there with husband and wife and children. All right. So Ruben and his family were there. <laughs> so Pumar, family ministry. And then people sort of giving, you know, rededicating their lives to understanding kingdom and sonship. And then, uh, uh, of course, uh, Ryan was also there. Ryan gave a brilliant testimony. Amazing. You know, uh, so that was beautiful. And then, of course, over the two days, all of us shared the message uh, in, diff in different areas as well. Uh, that's when Nairobi is where we really had that very interesting question and answer session on the second day about whether we should take wine for communion, whether it's okay to have intimacy with the husband and wife, with your partner <laughs> before coming to church, you know, Sunday service and all that. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah. 
So, and then the next one is of course uh, Kampala. We went to Jinja, Kampala, and Jinja. Oh my goodness! I don't want to go to Kampala again. It's a horrible place, you know. But I'm no condemnation. But compared to Jinja, was a paradise compared to Kampala, right? Uh, it was, and that's where Ruben also lost his phone as well. You know, it's, it's a notorious place. But anyway, we pray for them. We will see trans transformation there. So again, we you can see from this picture, we had great time. It was so exciting. You know, all three of us, we really enjoyed ourselves there. And uh, you know, the second and this guy, the third picture, you see this guy. I can't remember his name. What? I can't remember his name. Ruben, can you remember? I think. I believe his name is Noah. Noah, Noah, Noah yes. that's it, Noah. Uh, he was wearing he was wearing a collar, right around his neck. Yeah, he had it in his not, not a priest collar, a collar for, collar for a broken neck. It's a broken neck. Yeah, collar for a broken neck. Yes. And that was since December. He had a car accident. He had a bad injury around his neck and also his back, and he was still in pain. But when he came there, he was sitting right in the front. And in between, we put on a worship. So I think Ruben was speaking, and then we had a song. He was singing a song, I think, right? And he was reading. I, uh, we were reading the scripture in Luke 16, 16. Luke 16, okay, yeah, that's right. The Old Testament and the, yeah. About the prophet and the, and the law was until that's John, right. yeah. and then from this point onwards, the kingdom is being preached. Yeah. And, and he that, came to read it five times. Yeah. And then and the, moment, he, in the moment, while he was reading, he got completely healed. And he took off his collar and he was jumping up and down. He went on his knees, you know, praying. It's just amazing. It's just incredible, uh, you know, experience for him. And I think everybody there was really, you know, taken by that as well. So that was a really beautiful uh, experience for, for him. Uh, and it was really exciting for us as well to see how, you know, just by being there, uh, operating from a place of rest, how science miracles can take place. And for us, miracle is not, shouldn't be a surprise. It was not a surprise. It's something that we expect to happen. And that's exactly what happened there. And even in Jinja, uh, Kampala, this church, you know, the, the, the church where Pastor Joseph, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua again, you know, if people want to come for prayers, healing, we say, okay, you're going to pray for yourself. So they repeated what we said, declaration prayer, 80% get healed by themselves. We said then that only the 20% left over, then we ministered to them. And uh, it's just incredible. You know, legs got grown up, you know, cancer got healed, blindness got restored. It was just amazing. It's just incredible. And of course, this was the rugby uh, where we, you know, we can see we had a big banner there, uh, P61, Project 61 uh, project. So that's our banner that we, we, we put up there. And this is where we can see the game. And this is a bit of fun. After the game, the prize was given. Jeremiah J decided to do something. Haka? Haka? Yes. Oh, gosh. taught the Haka Sri Lankan style. <laughs> and Papa Luke was about to jump in and teach the actual no. no, no, no. <laughs> Style, but he didn't want to scare anyone with his tongue. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, what after that? Before that, in between, we had three healings there, right? This guy was uh, hobbling around with this. Uh, he could hardly put his weight on one of his hands, legs. He was hobbling, and then I called him, and they said, "What's wrong?" He said, uh, "I can't put my weight on my foot because it's sprained badly." And then, uh, so Papa Luke and I, we sat with him and we prayed. And then he jumped up around there. He was testing his foot. He said, what happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? And then he said, he, we said, you want to go back and play? He said, yes. So he went back and played again. You know, so, you know second semifinals uh, they were playing in. So incredible. And then the first the morning when I was there before Papa Luke and Ruben came. So there was an ambulance with a paramedic. And uh, so we, uh, so I, I was talking to the paramedics about identity. <coughs> and they were listening with such you know attention and uh, then this boy comes along this one of the rugby players came with a sprained neck he said he came and asked a paramedic for some medication so i asked them can, can i pray for him before the medication they said okay 
So I just laid hand and prayed and he walked away perfectly healed, right? And the paramedic lady got shocked. <laughs> she said, Matthew, you know, Pastor Matthew, I've got a friend who is half paralyzed in the hospital. Can you come with me right now? We're going to pray for her. So I said, let's go. So we got onto the border, border which is a motorbike, right? <laughs> uh, three of us. So the driver, she was sitting in the middle. I was sitting at the back, literally hanging on to the... <laughs> you know, the roads there are so bumpy and incredible, you know. So it was a 15-minute ride to the hospital. So we went through the emergency and we came to the, uh, that particular ward where she was. Her husband was there. She could not speak. She could just, you know, cannot move her right part of the body. So I just prayed for her for literally less than 30, 40 seconds. And she started to speak. She started to speak. The husband got a shock. You know, he said, my goodness. He said, praise God. And then we heard from her, this lady came to one of our conferences. She said, three days later, this lady got discharged. Wow. You know? So, and she started, the paramedic lady started following us all over, you know, the yes. conferences and all that. <laughs> so it's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, it just, I tell you, it was such exciting uh, things that happened. So, yeah, this is the, the last conference we had in Kitale. It's about 45 minutes from where uh, Gertrude's home is. And uh, it's predominantly pastors. Miles, Miles Sabah. Miles Sabah. Seven yeah, miles. Sabah. Seventh mile. It's called seventh mile. Yeah. So the number seven was significant as a mile seven, seventh mile, right? And this guy here, you can see this pastor here. He's a pastor. So before the night before that, as I said, I was doing some, I was sharing in the church in next, next to this, build, this tent and everybody came, got healed. So this guy was caught a message. A few others got the message. So he came quietly to me and said, Pastor Matthew, can I have a word with you? I said, okay. So he took me out to the corner. He said, I, want, I need you to pray for me. I said, you're a pastor, mm -hmm. right? He said, I, I'm having a terrible stomach problem. I cannot eat a lot of food. Every time I eat, I get gastric. I'm struggling. I said, okay, let's pray. I said, I asked him to pray. So put his hand down there and ask him to repeat. After that, I could see he's eating anything that he wants. Yeah. <laughs> and then he took me to one of his congregation members uh, who had a, a lick like a breast cancer, a big sore wound on the top of her breast. So we went then to her house and we prayed for her. And then there was another lady who came here with a, uh, with a growth under her left armpit. And she, uh, she heard the message that we, have, you know, we are here and you know, there are things are happening, healing is happening. So again, the pastor's wife took me aside. She said, can you pray for this lady? So we went to the car, into she took a corner. She showed me all the photographs of the medical report, the, you know, the arms, uh, the growth under her arm. And she says, been there for about seven months. She doesn't have the money to pay for it. Uh, medical uh, operation, surgery, so, and she was in pain. I said, okay, let's pray. So again, I asked her to pray for us, for, repeat after me. And within 10 seconds, the whole thing disappeared. Disappeared. And she was screaming. I don't know what, yeah, it was just a, like a, yeah. 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 She was in pain. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she just disappeared within ten seconds. And she was screaming. She was screaming. You know. And uh, so she came. Yeah, and then we came. She brought came to the front. Even so, does so when we say screaming, she was screaming in and crying yeah. because of the relief that had happened. And she even showed us the medical reports. She had the medical reports with her. So it was an authentic uh, healing that took place. And she does not come to that place. She was just told by someone, there's a healer here. If you want to get healed, come. And that's how she, she even found us in that conference. And they said it's in a back place. It's behind a, a place, a little church behind, hidden place. That's how they described it to her. <laughs> so what a joy. The schools, uh, this is the kids, uh, they had a five day conference. Five, five, five day conference. Can you hear me? Yes. Papa, look, I don't hold this way. No, I hold this way. <laughs> I don't, I think you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, 
this was the, the the kids were singing before the our session so i just took a picture here it was incredible the, you know they were all it's a christian obviously the all christians is a christian fellowship and it was just an incredible experience for us and for them and then this is the small private primary school we talked about where papa luke was sharing first and then i went and shared and then we prayed for them so one of the boys here is called james i can't see which one it is yeah, yeah, they were right in front this one yep, yep. okay yeah so again it's just and the teachers were surprised uh, that you know these these healings can take place so quickly and then they told us to go to each of the classroom and say hello to the children because they were excited about what's happening they want to meet us as well but it, you know we these are all actually not in the main road they are all interiors it took us almost what an hour to get there from from uh, jinja city yeah. town center and the, you need a really good four wheeler drive to go there I tell you, the roads were just messy, you know, just shocking. And then this is, of course, the in uh, Ken, uh, Kampala, where our dear friend here, Pastor Roland, he he was so excited with what we were doing, the message we're sharing. He immediately arranged for us to go to this uh, TV station, Lighthouse TV station, to do recording. So we took we recorded two sessions, half an hour sessions each, and subsequently they were one one was broadcasted uh, two weeks ago. The one one before that. So again, uh, it was an opportunity and we met the, the first, the manager in charge and he was so excited with what we're doing. He said, anytime you guys come, our studios are open for you to share the gospel, share the message. And it was exciting. Yeah. And then this one is where someone again, some healings, as I said, many everywhere we went, people came for healings. We just asked them to pray for themselves and take healing. And this is one where the blind guy got sight. This is one again, uh, I just want to show you this. He took I took off his glasses. Uh, Ruben, his name is Ruben as well. This is like Jesus when he was healing the blind. He only saw partial sight. And then he prayed, he put again and he got full sight. So this he prayed twice and then he got full sight. Jerry was recording this.
so that was really exciting for us as well. So now some some other you know just to we had some. Uh, this is the prison ministry. Uh, this is where the men's prison was. Uh, this is the warden in charge. Uh, it's called uh, Kakamera, Kakamera, Kakamega prison. Yeah, and then this is the lady was in lady in charge of the uh, juvenile uh, prison. So here Ruben was giving uh, the books for the library. Uh, so we did that and they were very happy with that. And then uh, Ryan and RB were just sharing some word of encouragement. Uh, so that was uh, exciting. Uh, but, and of course we had some uh, fun, there was a lady, I caught a video, I couldn't see when the lady, new warden who had came to the prison, she was only there for two months, right? And uh, so she, we pray, we encouraged her and prayed for her. And then Papa Luke asked her to make a declaration over her life. And she was in tears. You know, she was so encouraged with what we told her. And we spoke into her life uh, and it resonated well with her. And she was in tears. She was, you know, that was amazing experience as well. So that's, that was good. Of course, we had some fun time, right? You can see our friend was ready for his safari. <laughs> Papa Luke was ready for his safari, you know. And... Uh, <laughs> And then we had some, you know, some elephants here. Yeah, yeah. Was, they look more like lions to me than elephants. <laughs> you know, so this was, you know, the lion. I tell you, the lions just they don't care about people anyway. You go so close, they just they are sleeping all the time. They'll just lift their head up and look at the oh, it's just human being. Go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they all everywhere they were sleeping daytime. They hunt at night. Yeah, it's amazing. You know. Yeah. yeah, and then this is the River Nile where, where Lake Victoria and River Nile starts. It's an incredible place. We went over there by on a boat, and uh, you know the River Nile is actually a spring. It comes out of the ground 50 meters down, and is pushing up 4,000 liters of water every second. Amazing, you know. So that, that's where the Lake Victoria and and the uh, Nile was meeting, the White Nile. And it takes about three months for the water to go to Egypt from here. It's about 9,000 kilometers. And then somewhere in Sudan, the Blue Nile meets the White Nile. So that's why it's amazing, incredible experience. Yeah, just come, you can, you're right on top. Of we it. have lost sound. I say, that yes, we are right on top of it on the uh, boat. We've lost sound. Can you hear me? I can hear. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. I okay, you're back. You, we can you hear have, you now. You've got to check your ears. Do you want to pray for ears? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, some and uh, you know some other. You of course you guys have seen some of this video, and this was Papa Luke dancing away, showing how to dance. <laughs> so, <laughs> this one is safari, you know. Show you, show, show where you are, Ruhani. Oh, this is me, you know. Yeah. This with the massage, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lion's head, that lion's uh, skin yeah. head. Yeah, we from the massage. Hey, well, we, I tell you honestly, we had such an awesome time, you know. Both the ministry and our private. Yeah. You know, they, were, they were getting cops ready for marriage there, but he didn't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we're preparing for the wedding feast now. <laughs> oh, you know, you got to give 10 cows, you know, I can't afford 10 cows. <laughs> no, the higher you jump, the less number of cows. Oh, you yeah, start with that, 50 that's what I'm saying. I probably end up giving 12 cows because I can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> Australian cows are like, pretty expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really great. We really had an excellent time. So, guys, you know, just to give you some idea of what happened there, it's just... You know, just to summarize that. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I didn't have all the pictures here. These are some what I have actually captured and uh, it's on my phone. But, we, you know, we've got a Dropbox where we have all the photos that's available. So, yeah, over to Papa Luke and 